Okay. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for allowing us to participate. Um, we are going to have an absolutely unscripted talk to Laura Camis Wang. How do you say that in English? Laura Camis Wang. There you go. Uh, about audio description. And I'm probably not exaggerating if I say that you are the foremost audio describer in Denmark. I'm, I'm amongst, uh, uh, we're only very few in Denmark who are doing this, but uh, so I'd say we're, well, we're about uh, two who work steadily at Denmark's radio, the national television, and then uh, three work with the live audio description for live document, uh, live programs. The uh, We're two uh, work on drama series and uh, documentaries, longer documentaries and uh, movies. And... Uh, uh, a few more are now sort of starting to break into the area, and it's, uh, but it's, uh, it's, uh, we're we're no more than a handful who actually script, write the script, and do the voiceover for um, audio description in the um, visual department uh, at uh, on television and in the movies, and um, so it's a uh, it's a small small organization, and uh, slowly will develop because. Um, as we'll probably talk about, um, the area will sort of widen and open into a larger field within a very short while, I expect. Yes, we can get back to that at, at the very end. It's a very appropriate place to talk about the future. So, um, so yes. we'll just touch. We'll just touch on that, um, and then the. I think a, a small introduction, which is like sort of a few minutes about how. How is it actually done about your work process? Sorry, well, work process. Well, first of all, um, my name is Laura Camus Rang. I'm an actress and storyteller, and I've been a teacher within the communication area uh, for many years. I've taught people, uh, lecturers and uh, teachers at the university and uh, in high positions in companies to sort of feel comfortable about presenting what they know um, at larger conferences, um, how to adapt from one language to another. So with everything that I've done, it's always been about how do you convey the story in what you want to tell? And so with the acting, it's always about the emotions and body language. And with the storytelling, it's about details and, and descriptions. And uh, telling, uh, being a teacher, it's also communicating how, what's the most important factor of what you're talking about. And then in the last years, uh, working with the audio description, um, the editor's vicious knife, Kill Your Darlings, has then become one of the gifts that you have to learn to live with, um, which is uh, all that you would like to share you only have five words. So it's uh, very important to um, sort of but realize. It's not like subtitling. Exactly. You know, it's the same. If there isn't room for it, it's no use because nobody will be able to understand it. You have the available space. Sorry to interrupt. Go on. Yes. Well, less is more work. And it, uh, that's one of the very sort of raw truths of of any trade but especially this trade i think um, um the reason i sort of uh, i'm so interested in this area and uh, it is because my my own mother became uh, hard of seeing the last four years and then she became blind the last year and i didn't know that what i was doing how i was communicating with her how i was, was making her feel comfortable in the different settings that she was sort of being placed in, that she didn't have any idea of what were, <laughs> um, that that was something called audio description, something that people actually work very hard on building the confidence in, in sharing and uh, relating with the piece, uh, person who is actually accepting this um, uh, communication, which is different, putting words to what the person sees, or would like to see so that they have a reference with other people uh, to what is going on around them. Um, 
And then this was back in 13, and I had no idea about it because in Denmark, if you're not part of the Danish Blind Association, you're not automatically uh, invited into all the different remedies and, and technical facilities that are technical uh, aids to, to help a person who can't see. So I was never introduced to any of that. Uh, but then at one point, uh, a few years later, my my uh, voice uh, acting uh, colleague and the audio describer that I sort of was taught how to do audio description from, she said, well, I, I have a bit of a cough and I'm doing a live audio description in the theater as an actress. Would you like to help me? And I said, of course, what are you talking about? Of course, I'll be there. And so what we did was we came into um, a process where, where she had a video, and this is for live audio description, this is, and for the theater, which we saw the video of the play. And then we had the script for the play. And then we would sort of figure out what, what moments in what we were watching would be interesting. So change of place, change of person on stage, Differences in physical movement, showing how the person feels differently, different effects and the like, is what we made a manuscript. And in that, very poignantly, with very few words, helped to set the stage. And the reason I'm saying this is because this is actually what you're doing when you're doing audio description. When you're on working with something that is live on stage, uh, it, you have to be much more uh, flexible because on stage things can go wrong. When you're working with television and you're working with movies, you're actually quite lucky because what is there is what is there. And that's what you have to deal with. But the same flexibility of being able to sort of shorten your sentences from one moment to the next, is also necessary with a movie or a television program because you might just get, you might have seen one version and then the version has been cut into a tighter version when you receive it. And so you have to adapt. Then you have to be the editor again and then edit what you would like to say uh, at the spur of the moment, which means that you have to work on how many ways could you actually say this as simply as possible. Anyway, so what happened was I helped her out and then she, uh, uh, we did a wonderful live theater production and then she asked me to come and help her with the uh, um, two productions because that's again, one of the things, audio description is added at the very end, just like subtitles, just like that. You get it right before the deadline. And um, you might, with a movie, you might be able to get it a bit before so that you can actually sort of mm, be lucky with the cinema movies with audio description. We can actually be lucky to get it a little before. Um, but what happens is that you have to be very flexible uh, with the assignments that you get. Okay. So um, you might get an assignment and then it's a, a, a documentary and you have two weeks and then you have to given your audio description. And what the first thing you have to look at when you're talking about audio description is, if you see a documentary, the usual thing people will do with a documentary, they'll have a title and the person starts speaking. And then there will be a place where this person is, or there'll be a name. So the name and the title and the place where the person is. And this will be added into the movie. And the thing is, the blind person or the visual, uh, yeah, especially the blind person or the visually impaired person will have a scanner and that scanner might be able to pick up the text that's being uh, underneath um, the film or which has been added afterwards. But the text that is inside the movie <laughs> at a different layer is not going to be caught by the scanner. So this is the absolute, if we think of it as a Rubik's cube, it's the, the basic layer, the most important layer is who is speaking, where are they, and why are they speaking? So Dr. Anna, Anna Louise, she uh, is speaking from the hospital in St. Hens. 
<laughs> and so anyway, we know this is a doctor. We know it's an important person. There is a weight to what this person is saying. And usually they'll place it while the person is speaking, which means what do you do? Can you place it before she speaks? Or can you say, Dr. Anna, and then she says something from St. Hans Hospital afterwards, how can you fit things around the person speaking? So the blind person, and the visually impaired person can actually listen to this person as somebody who has something important to say. Um, so that's the basic one, which is something you cannot get around. Yes. Um, title, name, title, and place. And then you have the next layer, which is uh, the layer that has to do with a bit more description of where are they and what are they doing and uh, how are they doing it. It's a descriptive layer. If there's some time afterwards, then you can sort of say Anna is walking through the park and this she's walking towards the hospital with all the patients. And uh, the patients are looking through the windows uh, and, uh, and she's waving to them. And this sort of waving to the patients, it shows a relationship, with it, which is the top one. If she's smiling to the patients and they're smiling to her, we know the top layer of the Rubik's Cube is saying the mimicry, the body language and the relationship between these factors or these people is a nice and friendly relationship. If she walks towards the hospital and the person who was in the window disappears and the blinds go down and the doctor's steps start walking much more disciplined like a march. That's a different scenario. Now we're probably into the drama department. <laughs> so as so I'd like to say that there is a just like a Rubik's Cube, you have the first layer, which is what can't you get around? You have to say this. You have to mention that because if it's not mentioned, the person speaking could be anybody, could be anywhere. And so the second layer is, so what are they doing? How are they doing it? And are they dressed to do it? Or are they not dressed to do it? Are we doing a comedy and it's a, um, a fisherman is standing in the kitchen trying to make bagels or cupcakes? Um or whatever, you know, is there a comedy element in this? Is there something not right in the picture? But basically it's who is where and why are they saying this? And then of course, description layer, is that correlating with what we expect from this person? And then the top one is how does this person feel about it? Is there any possibility of talking about how the person uses their mimicry and their body language and how they relate to other people. So with a Rubik's Cube, you have a different layer, which when you go into drama, the drama department, there is the other element of time. And um, that's a bit more difficult because uh, if you have a flashback or you have a flash forward, what happens there? How do you actually usually there's a flashback if somebody's reading a letter and that letter was from my dearest one ba, 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 I'm not here anymore but if you're reading this letter uh oh the person is dead dear me <laughs> then blah 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 but how was that person feeling a flashback going back telling the story of that person so which words would you use to quickly tell the blind person this person the patient from the uh, first hospital that Anna worked at, uh, sits in the window and she's writing her letter in the moonlight. <laughs> you know, ba ba ba. How can you fit in something that will place the person speaking in a time frame before what's happening or after what's happening? But again, kill your darlings. You usually have five words, you usually have to be very concise. But uh, using, getting to know language, which of course many of you, I'm sure, are very interested in the different values, value criteria of uh, words, the differences of, this is something that you need to know a lot about when you're doing audio description. How, if somebody is sad, are they 
So how many different ways can you talk about being sad? Are they throwing themselves off a cliff or are they just sort of gently a tear is going down across their their chin or else it, is it just a tension? They're not breathing. Ah, she breathes again. Suddenly that is the relaxation of, oh, I can now talk to somebody again or suddenly there's a tear in the eye. But the most important thing is whatever you're doing, you have to be true to the product. You have to be true to what has the director decided that he wants to communicate. How can you sort of go and be true to that value of communication, which is set visually in front of you? And uh, not sort of go anticipate something. You can't sort of, you, we usually say, do not mention the name of the person before the person is named in the video. Sometimes you do have to just a few frames before if that's important and that person is not going to be there afterwards and that person was crucial for us to know about. Then you have to sort of bend a rule. But usually you are going to be, you have to be true to what you see in the pace that you see whatever you're seeing so that you're not anticipating and not going to give away something um, which would uh, well, hinder the person in really getting a true uh, experience of what is going on. The reason I see uh, audio description as very important is, first of all, it uh, can give you Give the blind and the visually impaired person a, um, a what's it called, a, 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 a common reference with the other people experiencing the movie so that they can talk together about what's going on at the same level. And uh, sometimes if they have a friend or somebody telling them what's going on, the friend will miss out on something that they might have liked to talk about afterwards. So in this way, if the person listening to the audio description and the person just enjoying the movie through their eyes, um, they will have different ways of looking at uh, the movie. They will have different experiences. And in this way, they can enrich enrich each other with their dialogue afterwards, but uh, on a common reference ground, which I think is very important, so that both parties can enjoy um, a movie or, or the information that's given. And um, that's the whole idea, I think, about the entertainment industry is uh, to give a great, uh, share a good moment. Got it. Okay, back again, and this time with a headset so that uh, Laura can hear me properly. Um, okay, so thank you for, this is a very good explanation of the mindset and how you think your way into an audio description. Um, I think um, v v covers, I think it covers most of of what people want to know when when it's not something they work with um so technically it's you you write your audio description script and then you it's you in the with in front of the microphone with some sound insulation how do you how do you do it um, I'm very old school and uh, the people I work with are also very old school. We do not have any computer systems uh, with the pro or, or the full program because we're so few. We're only about two doing the drama and the documentaries and the uh, film movie um, scripts. And then there are three who do sort of um, continuity uh, voiceover for television. So they uh, both do the uh, call outs for the next program is and uh, please welcome blah blah and they also do the uh, audio description live for cake shows and uh, x factor sort of live television and so they're really cool uh, but they do have small bits that are recorded and then they have so they can prepare something there they can prepare themselves to 
what is the scenario and what is the energy and how do I have, what kind of words and language should I use? Uh, what is the audience? You have to constantly think what kind of audience is going to be there when it's live. Um, and again, how few words can I use and what would be exciting or fun or something the person listening might want to talk about with the other people, something that's a bit sensational. If you can pick up something juicy that you can, in very few words, give to the person listening. Um, but with the um, documentaries and drama series and uh, movies, um, the whole process starts with accepting the movie, downloading it, and then watching the movie, finding out where are the pauses, cue to the last words spoken. This is the timing, time cue. What is the last word spoken text cue? And then, so in one way you have three sort of, uh, you divide your paper into three sections and the last section is, is where you can sort of write your audio description. And uh, then you sort of go through your script with the movie and find out, well, less is more, which means how much can you cut out of what you would like to say so that just the essential bits are there, but how can you spice those words, the few words that you have in such a way that they create a picture within the head of the person listening. So this is the challenge. <laughs> How can you actually use words, as few words as possible, but words that will give color and drama and, uh, and create interest towards what's going on in the visual side. But this is what you do, and it takes a long time. It's not easy, especially um, old school, where you actually have to sort of go on your computer and go from, go back, listen, mm-hmm. Then you sort of, but it depends on how you work, uh, because uh, uh, I would sort of say that I use um, um, I use fifteen minutes for for fifteen minutes. I use at least three hours to to do fifteen minutes, and uh, this is it's one thing that so and each fifteen for the first pro process. It's three hours per 15 minutes or 10 minutes, depending on how dense the uh, drama is, how much you can act, you have to write. Um, and then you do Excuse go to me, one. Is, is, that, is that to write your script? Yeah. Yes. To write the script for the drama, I would use at least three hours per 15 minutes for the first mm -hmm. one and then edit again. And then it's about half that time. And then depending on, the difficulty of the language and the, uh, yeah, um, you will go through it depending on how you, what kind of person you are. <clears throat> I'm sort of, I usually go through my script three or four times um, mm. to make sure that it's just the way I want it. Um, mm. But um, and and then when it's when it's right, I have when I've written the manuscript, then I go How into the all your bases. Then the you... sound and I have my script and the uh, technician has the script and then we go through the movie from the start to the end and we fit in all the different sound bites into the sound, uh, an extra sound um, file, which is added underneath the video. Mm -hmm. um, so it's sort of incorporated when you, on television, you listen to the television program it can either be incorporated in the movie and you see it, um, you hear it as you see the movie, um, but it can also be on a different track so that this, the movie without the soundtrack with the audio description will be shown on one channel and can also be found on a different channel with the audio description. It depends on what kind of uh, uh, mode the uh, television company you you talk to has in the cinemas there in Denmark we have an app for the telephone uh, telephone called movie reading and this app uh, when you sit in the movie uh, theater it will synchronize with the sound from the cinema 
with your telephone. So as you sit there with your headset in the cinema, in your seat, the person next to you will not necessarily hear your audio description in your ear. They will be able to sit completely like everybody else, watch the movie, mm -hmm. just hear the sound. But you will have added to your experience from the movie, movie the sound which describes in the pauses, in between the music, in between, as I usually say, when the music starts and the drama unfolds, the visually impaired or the blind person needs to have words to find out and follow what is going on. Okay, but to get back to the recording, you go yes. into a sound studio. It's You never record yourself, send off. Does everybody work the same way? It's always a sound studio. It if, um, it, I, I wouldn't think that you would have the possibility to do audio description on your own, unless it's for YouTube videos, small shoot, you can do that at home. But uh, for a, a professional uh, production, it um, you need a professional uh, technician. Mm. And also because you have such a small window of opportunity to actually deliver the voiceover that you're interested in, in sharing. And... Um, and for that to be a flow and not stressful and be nice to hear and sort of not something that I, I'd like to say that the audio description is just a helping whisper in the ear as the movie sort of starts and goes along. It has to be in a flow. If you're noticing the audio description as the film goes along, you will choose not to listen to it if it bothers mm. you. Mm. So the most important thing is be true to the movie, be true to your listener, yeah. be kind and be friendly. It's a, a, it's like that extra little hand in the back of your, you know, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the part of the lower of the back, if you're being sort of gently nudged forward. Yes, uh, absolutely. By, but if it's not, if it's something that goes da 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 da, -da and you, they can hear that you're stressed and, oh, there's so much going on, mm -hmm. la 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 la. It can be exhausting, and the, mm, absolutely, the, the blind person is already dealing with a lot of different impressions. Mm. So it, that's why it has to be a few words that are concise yes. and that create the picture that's necessary to understand the sound from the film mm. that you're listening to. Mm. Absolutely, I think a lot of people, the people in the audience who do subtitling. Um, will absolutely think of this. It's absolutely parallel to to their own our own product, you know, which is uh, a successful um, a subtitling is one that you don't notice. You just have a feeling that you understand this language. You have a a feeling you and you've had as much as it's humanly possible the same experience as the native speaker watching this film. You know whether you're you speak another language or you are hearing in uh, sorry uh, uh, sight impaired or or blind. You know, you you have the same level experience, and and that is always our goal, isn't that? Um, so, in terms of, I mean, it, when you describe your process, it's very clear that it takes time to create a good uh, product. And I'm uh, I'm also, let, let me just interject because I think we forgot to cover that, that, that the um, your voice is, is there, like you said, in a supporting role, in a supporting function. So even though you're an actress yourself, you have to take care not to sound like one of the, you know, you, you can't be dull, you know, a machine, Audio description to me is a nightmare. I've I've heard a few. It's terrible, but mm -hmm. but you have to you have to not conflict with anything that's going on. Again, just like a subtitler. It's um, you are the friendly assistant, and uh, but I mean, if you're dealing with drama. Um, then the pace of the movie. And your 
if you are if there's something going on which is very dramatic and you keep telling it like this and that uh, then you're not in sync with the energy of the movie so of course if there's something going on the the energy that you put into it just a little bit of going you know so if you follow the heartbeat of the scene you can mm. actually go a bit faster and say listen she was walking very quickly and there ah up the stairs suddenly she opens the door and if you can just sort of add a little bit of that that for me seems to that's something that i have uh, received as a good comment that mm. those tense moments when something dramatic is happening it doesn't matter if you sort of just follow that gently but it's mm. but everything has to be as as uh, under your breath as possible mm. <laughs> to be neutral as possible because it's also called um in danish it's called um uh suits talking which is this what you see and you in you, you do say that you have to be descriptive yes and not sort of put a layer upon that description which is uh, colored by what you feel and your emotions and how you mm -hmm. sort of as neutral as possible within that description but of course mm -hmm. just choosing the words that you choose will have a hierarchy when mm. you decide um, what words you choose, they will have a coloring from what you find is more important or stronger. They, there are words that are stronger and there are words that are weaker in mm. a description. Uh, and um, so, so of course, um, that that all influences the the final uh, mm. absolutely uh, receiving uh, the uh, receiving the the text. But uh, I like what you said about the heartbeat, because it's sort of, you have to follow the heartbeat of the film and the heartbeat of the scene yes. and, and not drag it down, but also not inflate. You just have to be this discreet, friendly presence it's, there. Yeah, it's like you, just like sound waves. You mm. see the sound waves on the screen. Well, if they're doing peaks, high peaks, then mm. you're doing something wrong because <laughs> the person exactly. listening Sort of going, oh my goodness to be bit. yeah absolutely you know, that sort of soft little sort of supportive um, a, a murmur uh, of um yeah which keeps you in tune with what's going mm. on I think that's very important um absolutely course, uh, there are different genres there are different yes. moods and tempo and different but and uh, documentaries are one thing. Mm, but there's, sorry, okay. sorry to interrupt you. It's just that we we don't have this that much time left. But it's oh. I was just going to mention that, of course, you know, there's film, there's documentaries, there's but there's also the municipality and and an information video about something important, and that may also need all kinds of visual content will need audio description. So, so it's a very wide field, really, um, and and it's what we up more and more. I mean, yeah. in Denmark in, in June, uh, all the uh, municipalities uh, will have to sort of uh, be accessible uh, in their presentations on, um, and they've gotten to the PDFs. <clears throat> the yeah, yes, video. and if somebody says video, they go, oh, um, uh, no, what we we are good with the vi uh, written material and uh, soon mm. they will get to the point where they say okay well <clears throat> videos will also have to be um uh yeah described absolutely but from from an yeah yeah from an adjacent field um when you ask them about or even local tv stations when you ask them about the subtitling and it's mandatory um they just go oh we're waiting for the automatic um you know so um so maybe a bit the of magical thinking voices, there automatic voices are a bit difficult still uh in um, a movie that i saw with an automatic mm -hmm. voice it was uh, um in the english version it was i'm going on a date and this it was all sort of do do mm -hmm. do and then the danish one it was i'm going on a date but with uh, the intention of understanding 16 uh 16th of february but okay. not a friendly okay date. data so, like the yes. actual oh dear that yes. is not not so good yeah 
you know, there are things that are missed when it's a computer, especially because it can recognize some things, but it won't, maybe in 10, 10 years time, they will be able to recognize everything. And um, I don't know, but at the moment, we're still very important because we do have that sort of uh, the um, Edge. possibility Absolutely. of using our minds to mm. sort of decide what is important. Yes. Absolutely. Now, lots of people are interested in this field. But there are not many places where you can train within this field, within the field of audio description. I mean, have you heard of, do you know of anywhere that has any formal training? Because yes. Joel not Schneider, Joel Schneider in America uh, mm -hmm. is very active and does courses all the way around the world um, mm -hmm. and will be able to sort of be invited to do courses because that's what he does and he actually invites people to come to the states and uh, they can get a degree after a course there but in barcelona in spain there's also at the university the possibility of uh, uh, going to a course and getting a degree in stockholm there's a company there and in uh in sweden there's some places and in london as well there are uh, places but um it's uh, it's not something that um, no everyone. It, it, the way I was trained was uh, the old school way of having a, delivering my version of something to my friend, who then gave it gave it back to me and said, "Whoop, this is what I'm finally doing in the paper in the yeah. in the script." And I'm going, "How did she notice that? How did she see that? Okay, fine. Well, now I know what to do." Oh. How did you see this? And that, of course, is more important. And ah, so the hard work of training, but uh, that's one possibility you can do. Many of the uh, different uh, programs like uh, YouTube, there is a audio description possibility in some mm -hmm. of these for very short videos. And in that way, you can actually sort of start working with what, what could work. And then if you know somebody who is blind or visually impaired or or somebody who works as an audio describer, I would definitely sort of meet with people, talk to them and, and mm. create little groups, uh, get some mentoring and uh, and get the dialogue going about why is this, uh, how is it different what, I, what I'm doing when I write, but the written word and the spoken word, there is a difference. So how mm. can you make that important and go and discover what is the difference? Listen to the, listen to uh, a movie, look at the text, listen to what's mm -hmm. going on in the audio description, and do the, um, you know, uh, detective work. Uh, yes. If you can't, if you can't go to a course, then you really have to sort of do some research. And there are books to get as well um, on this area. But um, as the media keeps changing and styles change, it's very important to to have a dialogue with somebody and. Uh, and especially the user, if you are in any way able to talk to somebody who, who will benefit from being helped, um, then you'll also realize which areas this person does not want any help within that uh, area. Yeah. And you will not do it for that person. And one of the most important things is you cannot, you can't win them all. No. And uh, the way that I do my audio description is different from my colleague's way of doing audio description. And this is the thing that will happen. You will have, you, with your, your experience, you will have something that you will bring to the field. And, uh, but you always have to be open to sort of saying, okay, well, this doesn't work. Fine. Mm. How can I do it differently? Um, okay. So that was, that is an amazing a handful of, of really practical tips here. There is practice with using the YouTube function. Find uh, written materials. Find a course, perhaps. Um, I think, we, you know, I think it's okay. I hope it's okay, Petra and Saldra, that we ask if anybody wants to know, they can either send an email to the AVTE um, email or they can send one to Petra or Sandra and they will pass it on to us. Um, we'll try and construct some sort of list of uh, resources or, or information um, that that we have um, if, if there is any interest in this um, because um, 
it's it it's, sounds like there is a way forward even if you don't live near a university that has a course in this that is that is really good and i think we we touched about on the future a little bit which is that this field is opening up um because um there is more and more more and more in, content in 2025 all com companies in denmark if they have a website in on which they place a video this video will have to be accessible some people will say, oh, well, we've made a little small description which can be read underneath the video. But some videos actually need to be, um, the description needs to be said along with the video as you watch the video. Mm. Otherwise, it'll be yes, very confusing. You won't yeah. understand it. And especially if it's an Formation video as something that's very important, life or death. Mm. This is how you use your your diabetes pen, or this is how you uh, make sure that your vaccination is right, um, or whatever. You know, um, these information movies will have to have um, an audio description way. And it, it, one of the important things I think is uh, uh, it, it's important to say is that it's not only the visually impaired and the the blind who can benefit from listening to something. If you are stressed, if you have had a brain concussion, if you have uh, any of the other, if there are any sort of cognitive uh, challenges that you experience, if you've had, um, uh, well, if you are word blind and you can't follow the text which is going on underneath, if you're new to the language and you feel insecure and you know that you have to ask somebody about this and and what was the name? And uh, if you are physically, uh, oops, I just, if you are physically um, not able to use a mouse while you are watching because mm. your hand is in a cast <laughs> or whatever, uh, being able to hear the uh, it, instructions while you're watching is something that might really benefit a very large group of people. Mm. And um, this is something that people are not so aware of because they don't listen to an audio description because, well, I can see, I can hear, yeah. so I don't need this extra thing. But in Finland, they say up to 20% of, of society can benefit from both mm -hmm. listening to a supportive uh, description alongside the video uh, mm -hmm. version of an information movie. And I think this is very important. But, um, and, and, and I, help but it helps a larger group of people it, it really does and as somebody who uses quite often uses uh visual content as a form of radio because i'm doing something else at the same time you know um you can also benefit from the audio description in in that case well i think we've gone way over our time <laughs> this was fascinating thank you so okay. much laura and and thank you to all of you all my colleagues and um if you have any questions, anything, just um, just feel free, feel free to ask. Um, and thank you very much. Well, thank you for asking, and I hope everyone will have a great experience.